Good day, students. This lesson is about uh, lesson five. We have uh, learning objectives. Now, we are already done with uh, previous lessons, especially on planning for effective instruction. And I would like to emphasize that in all educational endeavor, in every part of the teaching and learning process, the learning objectives are very important. The goals are very important. And we know that in the principles underlying effective instruction, focus is very important. And so as teachers, to become effective educators, we have to set effective learning objectives. We have to be able to set clear goals for ourselves and for our students. So every educational endeavor, and even our personal ones, start with being aware, knowing, and understanding of what we wish to achieve. Teachers set statements on this at the planning stage. They look forward about what they want their students to achieve. We, as teachers, we look forward to what we want our students to achieve. For the whole system, this could be stated as aims, goals, and objectives. In higher education, these are commonly called as outcomes. Now, these statements provide direction or focus to both the teacher and the students as they interact inside the learning environment. Remember that these objectives have focusing effect to both the teacher and especially for the students. And that focusing effect will let students be oriented on what they will be expecting in that lesson or in that session. Without these objectives, without these goals, it would be difficult for the teacher to plan, teach, and assess, and for the students to focus on and learn. So for this lesson, we have this course learning outcome. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to be able to construct a specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time-bound learning objectives. This is what I want you to be able to do at the end of this lesson. I want you to be writers of SMART objectives. We have a specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. So for example, I would like to begin with this example from Balyada 2017 with the following learning objectives for a lesson in that book. After studying this chapter, you should be able to. So the book is stating it as you, as if it is communicating to the learners. Okay? You should be able to first explain accrual accounting and state how it improves financial statements. Apply the revenue and expense recognition principles. Identify the types of adjustments and their purposes and illustrate how accounting adjustments link to financial statements. So see, you can look at the four learning objectives that they are giving the students what they will be expecting to learn and to do at this chapter of the book of Paliada. So before going through what are learning objectives, let us first differentiate what is aim, what is a goal, and what is an objective. So aim refers to the intent of education. For example, we have the general intent of the Philippine higher education. So you are college students, you are included here, that the Philippine higher education system that is equitable and producing locally responsive, innovative, and globally competitive graduates and lifelong learners, which means when you are enrolled in a college or a university, this is one of the aims of the institution that you are enrolled in. For the Department of Education, since you will be teaching senior high school students, this is the vision or this is the aim. We dream of Filipinos who passionately love their country and whose values and competencies enable them to realize their full potential and contribute meaningfully to building the nation. Now at a university level or at a school level, it could also be the vision of the university or the vision of the school where you will be teaching. 
we also have the goals. Okay, so here, goals describe the purposes of education and it is broader than objectives and it takes long range or it takes a long period of time to be able to attain. So for example, we have here the goal of accounting education. So to produce competent and ethical professional accountants capable of making positive contribution over their lifetimes to the profession and the society in which they work, according to CMO number 27, series of 2017. So this is the purpose of accounting education, to be able to produce competent and ethical professional accountants. And of course, you will become CPAs in the future. We would want you to become this uh, professional accountants, competent and um, observing ethics or standards of ethics. For basic education, the goals could be translated into the mission statements, which is to protect and to promote the right of every Filipino to quality, equitable, culture-based, and complete basic education. At a university level or at the school level, it could be the mission statements as well. Now for the objectives, these are the most specific statements of directions, of targets in the teaching and learning process. Here, it is a description of what is to actually take place at the classroom level. Compared to goal and aims, there are so much broader and there are so many things considered for these aims and goals to be achieved. For objectives, these are only set at the classroom level, at one session, at one period. Okay? It specifies contents and sometimes also the proficiency to be attained. So here is another uh, figure sharing the differences among aim, goal, and we have objective. We focus on the objective because that is our main point for this lesson. According to this material here, it is an objective which is a measurable, observable behavior of less than a day's duration. So in the K-12 curriculum, these objectives are found in the following. The core learning area standard, key stage standards, grade level standards, content and performance standards, learning competencies, and specific learning objectives. All these are found in the curriculum guides except for the specific learning objectives. Because my dear students, in the curriculum for grades 11 and 12, okay, take note of this, in the curriculums, in the curricula for grades 11 and 12, especially for the subject that they will teach, AFBM1 and AFFABM2, I should say. Okay? The only targets stated there are the content and performance standards and the learning competencies. This will guide you of what are the expectations for the two subjects, FABM1 and FABM2. Now, for the specific learning objectives, it will be the task of the teachers to write this specific learning objectives based on the competencies and the standards. So our guide in writing the specific learning objectives would be the content and performance standards and the learning competencies. So make sure that you have visited this already in the documents in our learning management system. Now in higher education in the Philippines, these objectives are stated as outcomes and some of which are stated in the CHED Memorandum Order or CMO for every degree program. So if you will be teaching in the college, these are documents provided by CHED. Sometimes we can find there the outcomes, sometimes not. So there are CMOs in which they provide the outcomes. There are CMOs in which they do not provide the, the outcomes. So these outcomes are program outcomes, course outcomes, and course learning outcomes. For the accountancy program, it is found in CHED Memorandum Order number 27 series of 2017. So if you have plans teaching in the tertiary department or college level, 
you have to visit the CHED Memorandum Orders for the, for the programs that you will be teaching. So we have here a teaching model adopted from Moore's Classroom Teaching Skills wherein objectives are always there in each part. We begin with establishing objectives. So we have to establish our targets or our goals. And then our instruction will be based on those objectives. We have to teach towards the achievement of those objectives. And we have to evaluate based on our objectives as well. Okay. So now, lesson objectives must be SMART. Again, what is SMART? I think this was mentioned on the uh, earlier part of this video. What is SMART? SMART means specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Now, aside from time-bound for letter E, there's actually another term for time-bound for T which is terminal, which means it has an end point. There is a stop or there is a finite end to that objective, which means it should be attainable at a specific period of time. However, for today, lesson objectives must be smarter. So from being smart, it now became smarter. So what do you think is the meaning of the additional two letters E and R. So we have still the same, specific, specific measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. And for E and R, okay, so we have here evaluated or extending skills. The objectives should be evaluated or the objective should be able to extend skills. So either of the two. And of course, it should be reviewed and rewarding, rewarding for the students. They should feel good about the lesson and they should see the relevance of the lesson to their personal lives or to their future lives. Okay? That's very important. Now let's take a one minute break before we proceed to the next part of this lesson. Now let's continue the rest of our lessons. Now in writing objectives, there are three classifications. And we know that there are three domains of learning, right? Can you recall what are these three domains? So we have the teaching of what, which is on the cognitive domain. We also have the teaching of how, which is on the affective, uh, psychomotor domain, I mean. And of course, the teaching to be, which is on the affective domain. So our objectives could be classified as well in those three domains. Meaning, as teachers, we, only, we all aim for the cognitive, for the development of the psychomotor domain, and the development of the affective domain as well. It is not enough that we are teaching for the brain, for the mind but we also teach for the body and for the heart. So we begin with the cognitive domain. So this is about dealing with academic information and knowledge. Our objectives are based on what we want our students to know. Okay? 
So it's about academic knowledge and information, ideas, concepts, theories, principles. It emphasizes intellectual learning, especially problem solving, especially that we are in the 21st century. We should train the minds of our learners to be able to solve problems. Now, the cognitive domain and its taxonomy was created by, we have Benjamin Bloom. This is the old Bloom's taxonomy. As we can see here, we have a figure showing the levels of thinking in the cognitive domain. In the old model, the lowest form of learning under the cognitive domain is knowledge. It's about memorization of facts, dates, theories, concepts. So it's more of recall. But uh, as we go higher, the level of thinking gets more complex, right? So from knowledge, from remembering, we have comprehension, which means they are able to understand the lesson already. When we say understand, they are able to translate it in their own words. They can use their own words to explain, to discuss. That's uh, comprehension. Now for application, they are able to connect. Okay? Connect what they have learned with other examples, with real life scenarios. They are able to apply the knowledge into other things. Okay? Analysis is being able to break down a specific concept into smaller parts. We also have synthesis that's already putting together, okay, creating something new. And the highest in the old model of Bloom's taxonomy is that when students are able to evaluate, to criticize, to judge, okay, that's in the old. However, we have here the new model of Bloom's taxonomy wherein the words knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation are transformed into verbs. Remember we said about what we said about learning, these are changes which could be observable in our students. And when verbs are used, these are action words, we expect that these actions will be observable in our students. So now from knowledge, it, it was transformed to remembering. So remembering is still the lowest form of learning or the le lowest level of learning according to the Bloom's taxonomy. We also have understanding, then we have applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. As you can see, evaluating from the highest became the fifth in the new model. And synthesis became the highest in the new model, which is now creating. So being able to create new knowledge, new principles, new things, new objects, are examples of being able to achieve the highest form of learning in the new Bloom's taxonomy, which is creating. So if a student was able to create a short story that's already the highest form of cognitive learning, of learning in the cognitive domain. So please, my dear students, please go over websites uh, talking about or sharing about the descriptions, further descriptions of the different levels of learning in the cognitive domain. So I will be leaving to you that as a learning task to challenge yourself to understand better what is about the cognitive domain. So aside from the mind as well, okay, as well we have to teach the heart. So we have here the affective domain. We have the teaching to be. So we cover here about attitudinal, emotional, and valuing goals for learners. What do we want our learners to achieve in terms of desirable attitudes, desirable emotions or feelings, and of course, desirable values at the end of our lesson. For accounting, there are so many professional values or attitudes that we want to develop in our students. We have mentioned about honesty, transparency, and many things. Okay? So this is development of attributes like Genuine interests, desirable attitudes, values, and commitment. 
It encompasses likes and dislikes, attitudes, values, and beliefs. I think the teaching of the affective domain is something that we can always include in our objectives. We do not have to spoon feed to our learners the value, but we can tailor fit the learning experiences. We can design activities so that they will be able to develop these desirable attitudes, values, emotions, and anything else under the affective domain. The common mistake of teachers is that they are explicitly teaching the value. They are like spoon feeding the value to the students. And that is not the proper way of learning in the affective domain. I always believe that it boils down or it is based on how we properly design the learning experiences to our students so that these desirable attitudes, values, emotions will be developed in them. So now the taxonomy for affective domain was developed by David Crackwall. So again, who developed the domain or the taxonomy in the cognitive domain we have starts with letter B, that's Benjamin Bloom. Now for affective domain, we have David Crackwall. So we have here the levels of learning in the affective domain. So we have receiving, then responding, valuing, organizing, and characterizing. So what are the differences among these levels? So we have here some brief descriptions of what are in each level. So receiving is only being aware or willing to learn or listen about an event. So you, you can see here that the focus of the learning is about the event, those things that happen inside the classroom. What are the students going to do to be able to develop their affective domain? Participate in the event, that's responding. So receiving is simply listening, for example, but responding is reacting to what they have listened to. Now, valuing is already forming what is the value that they have heard? For example, they're going to accept or now recognize the value of the event by participating more. Now, our students will be able to develop several values over time. Now, the fourth level of learning in the affective domain is organizing, which means from all the values that they have developed, they can know which one is the most important and the least important for a specific event. They are able to assimilate, internalize, and the keyword here is prioritize its importance with other events. For example, in, this, uh, in a particular accounting activity, you are going to, the students should be able to identify the most important value in preparing financial statements. So what do you think is the most important value in preparing financial statements? Is it honesty? Is it uh, um, respect? Is it uh, discipline? So from the values that they have developed in preparing financial statements, they will be able to identify which one is the most important or the pri topmost priority. And of course, we have the fifth, which is the highest level of learning in the effective domain. We have characterizing. So this is now fully integrating the value by participating in the new event and they do it regularly and consistently. That even if we are not watching them, they are still able to perform this value or exhibit this desirable attitude or desirable value. So these are the levels of learning in the affective domain. Now, aside from the affective domain and the cognitive domain, what again is the third domain of learning? We have, starts with letter P, that is the psychomotor domain, which talks about physical movement and coordination. Now, take note, my dear students, huh? if we will go back to what we can learn in accounting, it seems that there are not much physical movements and coordination. There are no dances, there are no sports, there are no place to be 
performed in the accounting subjects. But there could be, there could be um, development still of the psychomotor domain even in accounting subjects. We just have to find opportunities for these psychomotor domains to be developed as well. So here, it emphasizes the development of motor skills. Motor skills, which means it involves the development of body parts, the gross motor skills, the fine motor skills, locomotor, non-locomotor, um, manipulative skills, anything that has something to do with the development of physical movement and coordination. It is focused on the processes and acquisition skills involving the mind and the body. And according to Gron Lud, there are three levels of psychomotor learning. We have imitation, manipulation, and precision. Now, we have actually more than three levels. We have here seven levels, and the lowest form is perception. It's based on senses, the development of the senses of the students. I will leave this to you as an assignment okay? since uh, the psychomotor domain is not much related to accounting education as I have emphasized about the development of motor skills, physical body and movement. Unless you can identify an activity in your accounting subjects or a lesson in your accounting subjects where these physical skills are necessary to be developed. Do you need to have good handwriting? That's fine motor skills. Do you need to be able to encode, encode faster, encode properly? That could be, that's fine motor skills as well because we are involving our hands. We need, do, we, do accountants need to develop their fine motor skills in handwriting or encoding. That could be a target or that could be an objective under the psychomotor. Let's have again another one minute of rest before we proceed to the next part of this lesson. Let's now go back to the rest of our lesson about learning objectives. So we are done with the three domains of learning. What are again the three domains of learning where we can set our objectives? We have cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. And which of the domains is not very much seen in accounting education? It is the psychomotor domain. Now let's go over some other things that we need to know about our objectives. So in the taxonomy of objectives, by the way, I have not introduced a while back the meaning of the word taxonomy. Um, in biology, we have taxonomy, right? And when we say taxonomy, it is the science of meaning organisms. Now in objectives, when we say taxonomy of objectives, it is the process of being able to identify the 
appropriate objectives for the lesson. Not simply labeling, but knowing which words to use in creating our objectives. So in the internet, my dear students, you will find there the words that you can use in constructing objectives, learning objectives, smart learning objectives, or we say smarter learning objectives. We have so many available references in the internet, which we can use as a basis to look for words that we can use in constructing or in writing learning objectives. So for our um, objectives, for the taxonomy that we are going to use, they can serve as a guide in determining what is the appropriate level of behavior associated with a desired learning outcome and the extent to which objectives for a unit of instruction reflect various levels of behavior. From the taxonomy, you can identify what level of thinking will be involved in our lesson. Let's now write behavioral objectives, or when we say behavioral objectives are still pertaining to learning objectives. There are four components of objectives according to Major and Kibler. We have the behavior or the performance. It describes what the learner are expected to do. For example, to write, the plural forms of nouns ending in Y. The behavior or the action that is expected is to write, write. We also have the second component, which is the product. It is what the students will be able to do or to produce after the lesson. For example, to list the main ideas of the essay. Here, what is the behavior? It's list. That's the action verb. And the product is the main ideas. We can get the whole term, main ideas of the essay that is acceptable, that is still the product, right? It provides more context. We can also have to identify the simile and metaphor used in the poem. So we have the word identify, which is the behavior. And we have our product would be the simile and metaphor. The third component is condition. It specifies the circumstances or situation in which a student performance will take place. If you will notice in my previous lessons or in my previous presentations, I have the words at the end of the lesson, the students should be able to, or you should be able to. The phrase at the end of the lesson is the condition. That is the learning condition, that there is a lesson. It, we could also have here, based on the article, that's the condition. Give five sentences with nouns and pronouns. Given a compass, that would be the condition or at the end of the lesson or at the end of the activity. So these are examples of conditions that we state in writing our objective. And the fourth component would be the proficiency level or criteria. We can set, okay, as teachers, we can set acceptable standards of competency or achievement level. However, this is optional actually. In practice, okay, my dear students, I will be uh, realistic to you. In practice, there are so many objectives which do not have a proficiency level or criteria because it could be disappointing for the teacher if at the end of the lesson, this specific performance criteria or proficiency level was not achieved. However, it serves as a challenge for many that if they say the student should be able to answer with 75% accuracy, they will really target that all students will be able to answer at least 75% correct of the activity that, will, that they will be providing. So here we have a, an example of a learning objective. We have given five primary colors. The students will be able to identify four primary colors. Again, what are the four components that we need to identify? The behavior, the product, the condition, and the proficiency level or criteria. So in this example, 
what is the behavior? We have identify. Okay? The product would be the primary colors. The condition is that they are given five primary colors. And the proficiency level is that they should be able to give or, or identify four out of five. So yes, you can see the proficiency level here are, is not explicitly stated as four out of five, but it can be deduced. It can be deduced from the given learning objective. Another, after seeing a film on pioneer life, the pupils should be able to describe the three values that were prized by the pioneers. So what's the behavior? We have described. What is the product? We have the values or three values. What's the condition? We have after seeing a film on pioneer life. And what is the proficiency level or the criteria? Here, the criteria is that the values should be priced by the pioneers. It should not be any value. It should be the values that were priced by the pioneers. Another example we have after reading a poem, the pupils should be able to note details with 90% accuracy. It's very easy. What's the behavior? Note. What's the product? Details. What's the condition? After reading a poem. And what's the proficiency level? with 90% accuracy. We also have what we call instructional and informational objectives in relation to the four components. So when we have the four components, if some of them are absent, they will be classified as informational objectives. But if all the four components are present, they will be classified as instructional objectives. Again, when the four components are present, it's considered as an instructional objective. But if only two okay, are present, for example, the product and the performance or the behavior are present, it is considered as an informational objective. So guidelines in preparing instructional intent, or we have been using another word, well, we are using another word again, but this is still about learning objectives. Okay. So we have to spell out the terminal behavior or the performance. Again, for these behaviors or for these verbs, my dear students, we have so many available references in the internet to select the best verb that fits what we want our students to achieve. Okay. We have to select the most appropriate behavior so we can do that by looking at so many choices. And these choices can be found in many materials found in the internet. The second, we have to specify the product. We have to have the behavior. We have the product. Describe the condition. And of course, we have stating the criteria of acceptable performance or still to state the proficiency level or criteria. Aside from the four components that were mentioned a while back, we have, what are the four components mentioned a while back? We have behavior, product, condition, and proficiency level or criteria. We can also have another name. We have the ABCDs of writing objectives. The ABCDs are still Four components. We have A that stands for audience, B for the behavior, similar, C for the condition, and we have D, the degree of proficiency or previously its proficiency level or like that. So what's new in the ABCD would be the audience, which is simply the student or the learner. For example, we have here, Given 10 sentences con containing 20 misspelled words, the learner will underline at least 16 of the misspellings. For number one, 
let's go first with the first uh, example. Who is the audience? It's the learner. What is the behavior? It's underlying misspellings. In the behavior in ABCD, we have to include already the product. So here, the behavior is underlying misspellings. But if you will see underlying, I think that's uh, still acceptable because we are simply looking for the uh, behavior. But it will be lacking information if we will simply say underlying. We have to associate already or to include already the product, which is misspellings. So again, the audience would be the learner. The behavior is underlying misspellings. The condition is given 10 sentences containing 20 misspelled words. And what is the degree of proficiency? It should be at least 16. So for the second, do we have an audience? Yes, the learner. Do we have a behavior? Yes, solve. Solve binary addition problems. Do we have a condition? No. For the second example, we don't have a condition. Do we have a degree of proficiency? Yes, it's at least 8 of 10. In this example, this will be left to you as an exercise. Maybe you can pause this video to identify the audience, the behavior, the condition, and the degree of proficiency. So where you can find the action verbs, again, as I mentioned a while back, in writing our objectives, we can find so many words that we can use on these links here. So please go over these links so that you will be more familiar with the different levels of learning in the cognitive, affective, and psychomotor domain and familiar with the words that you can use for each level of learning. Let's take another break before we proceed to the next part of the lesson. Let's now continue our lesson on learning objectives. So we're done with the orientation of what objectives are. We're also done with the three domains of learning where we can write our objectives. We're also done with the components of the objectives that we need to write. Now let's go to more specific area on where we are going to write our learning objectives, where you are going to write the learning objectives. Again, we have to base it out in our K-12 curriculum guide. In your case, you will be using the curriculum guides for FABM1 and FABM2 for senior high school. So we have here just some uh, ideas about the K-12 curriculum guide. So the teacher's objectives are guided by the content and performance standards and learning competencies. I have mentioned this at the beginning of this lesson. The content standards are about content, the things that they need to demonstrate an understanding of, 
And the performance standards are things that the students should be able to do or perform. The learning competencies are the more specific knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes that the learners must demonstrate after a teaching and learning process. So we have again in the curriculum guide, our basis for writing our objectives, our learning objectives would be the standards and the competencies. Okay. We focus on the learning competencies. Okay. So here, the expectations for the students are unpacked in the curriculum guide in terms of learning competencies, which can be adapted in the teaching and learning plan as instructional, behavioral, or we call it more commonly as learning objectives. Again, my dear students, from these statements, it means that we can use the learning competencies in the curriculum guide as our learning objectives as well. However, it is also possible that aside from those stated from in the learning competencies, we can break it down into more specific learning objectives okay? that is also possible. Now, for instance, we have a one, a one competency here that is allotted for one or two weeks. That's possible. One competency is allotted for a week-long lesson, which means if you will be teaching four days in one week, you should have specific learning objectives for each day. It is not enough that you only have one goal for the whole week. That is the goal for the whole week. The question is, what are your specific goals to be able to achieve that one goal for the whole week? You have to think about that. For example, you want to finish. Okay? You want to write an essay or you want to write a short story, that's your goal for the whole week, how are you going to divide that goal into days? What is your goal for the first day? What are your goals for the second day? And so on until you reach the last day. So there are instances that one competency is allotted for one or two weeks. For example, we have here the competency for this is science grade eight. Each competency has a code. So how do we decode the code in the curriculum guide? When we have S, that means science. Eight means grade eight. The empty there means matter. We have the Roman numeral three, which means this is a lesson in the third quarter. The letters A and B means A is the first week. B is the second week of the quarter. If you have letter G, that's the seventh week of the quarter. If you have letter I, that is the ninth week of the quarter. So it provides a schedule or it provides a guide for the teacher in which week is this uh, competency allotted for. And the uh, number at the end is simply the competency number because it is possible that uh, there are 20 competencies in the quarter, so this is just a basis to count the number of competencies. For this case, the science teacher cannot lift directly his learning objectives from the learning competency. Again, it was mentioned here that the learning competencies can be adapted as learning objectives, but in this example, the science teacher cannot lift directly the behavioral objectives or the learning objectives from the learning competency. So with this means for every session for two weeks, the science teacher needs to write specific learning objectives. Because this competency that you see is allotted for two weeks, weeks A and week B. So you have to really think of what are your specific learning objectives for every day. Okay? So for example, on the first day, the specific learning objectives would be at the end of the lesson, there's the condition, the students, there's the audience, the students should be able to describe solid, liquid, and gas. Okay? Differentiate molecular properties of solid, liquid, and gas. 
as you can see, these two objectives at the bottom are re related on how they will be able to achieve the learning competencies. Before they can explain the properties of solid, liquid, and gas, they have to know first the descriptions of solid, liquid, and gas, the molecular properties of solid, liquid, and gas. Okay? So here's an example of learning competencies from FABM. So we have here the code ABM. This is a subject for accountancy, business, and management. We have the code FABM. This is under the subject fundamentals of accountancy, business, and management. We have the grade, that's grade 11. We have the quarter, that's third quarter. Letter A, first week. Number one is a competency number. Now these competencies here, the four competencies here, are just four out of 10 competencies for week A. If you're going to look at the curriculum guide for FABM in grade 11, there are 10 competencies for week A only. So since there are many competencies for one week, the FABM teacher can use these competencies already as the specific learning objectives. You are lucky if you have many competencies because you don't have to think of the objectives. So here again, the FABM teacher can use these competencies as specific learning objectives. And then they could add other objectives that are essential for the students to achieve. If you will look at the curriculum guides, you will not see competencies related to the affective domain. So it might be a good idea if you are going to add an objective in the affective domain. Again, the affective domain should always be present in our lesson. It should always be present. If we are going to look at the curriculum guide of FABM1, the specific learning objectives for day one could be, okay, at the end of the lesson, the student should be able to blank. Okay? So there are four specific learning objectives. We can use the student should be able to, or we can use the student should have. But for the use of should have, we have to put there the correct form of the verb. Okay? Like that's past participle. So your activity, my dear students, is to show or to write specific learning objectives for the fourth and fifth weeks of the third quarter. So suppose you, are, suppose you are to start on this topic, types of major accounts. What will be your specific learning objectives? Make at least three. So which means you should not repeat what are in these competencies here. You should think of different statements of specific learning objectives. Okay? That is your activity for this lesson.